Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little while since I've shown my face. Um, some of you might know already, but for those of you that missed it or don't follow me on Instagram, we're expecting a little plus one. Okay, so it's been a little while, but I'm here. And today we're going to be learning how to make French macarons. I use the Italian method style, so I'll be showing you that today. Um, it will be completely from beginning to end, start to finish. I will show you all of the tools that you need, all of the ingredients that you need. Um, it will be more of an in-depth tutorial. I'll try to keep it short and sweet, but it will be more of an in-depth step-by-step considering how finicky these cute little cookies can be. Um, but we'll get started. We'll jump right in and I hope you enjoy it. So this is the equipment that you'll need to make your macarons. Okay, it looks like a lot, but it's not too bad. We have a spatula and a small pot, all right? We have our KitchenAid or stand mixer here with the whisk attachment, okay? You wanna make sure you have the whisk attachment. We have some piping bags and some couplers with just a small tip, okay? We have a digital scale, digital thermometer, this is very important, and our food processor. So aside from that equipment, there's a few more things that you obviously will need. You need sheet pans. Okay, so I already have some sheet trays, sheet pans lined with parchment, okay, very smoothly. I sprayed it a bit and then lined it. Um, you want to make sure that it's very smooth, that there's not a lot of air bubbles or lumps. You want a very smooth, flat surface for your macarons, okay? Um, we're using parchment today because that's the first um, surface that I learned how to bake macarons on. I do now usually love to use these little sill pad mats, okay? You can go and find those on Amazon or you can get them from really anywhere. Um, but I can provide the Amazon link. If you'd like to use those, you can. I like them because they have the little circle guide so you can get those uniform sizes. Um, but I'm gonna show you on parchment since that was the first surface that I learned on. There are other surfaces if you'd like to do some research and see what works best for you, whether it's parchment or Teflon or the silicone mats. Um, there's lots of options and aside from those i do also use an oven thermometer so we have digital scale digital thermometer oven thermometer but like i said sometimes they're very finicky this stays in my oven um, but i took it out so that you can see um, this is important because you want to know exactly what temperature your oven is at um, because the cookies you know if your oven is too hot or it's not hot enough for whatever reason you know home ovens can be tricky so it's important to have one of these so you know exactly what your macarons are baking at okay so we'll get started with the ingredients so for ingredients it's really quite simple because there's only four you need granulated sugar powdered sugar okay the bob's red mill almond flour you can find almond flour pretty much in any brand i like this brand though it's Super fine almond flour, okay? You can find that at my local grocery store. I believe it's pretty much everywhere. And egg whites, fresh egg whites. I've already separated them from the yolks, okay? We're using only egg whites. Um, you can use the yolks for any type of curd, pastry cream, French toast, anything you like, but we're just gonna be using egg whites and those ingredients, all right? So let's get started with the process. Okay, so we're going to start by scaling our almond flour and powdered sugar. Okay, so we're going to grab our scale. Forgot to mention that you'll need a bowl. Sorry. So you're going to turn your scale on. You're measuring in grams. Okay, so we'll put our bowl there. We're just going to zero it out so it's weighing only the flour and sugar. Okay, so we're doing a fairly small batch today. This is usually the smallest batch that I make, but it's 150 grams of the almond flour. Okay, we're gonna pour 150 grams of almond flour in 
our bowl. Okay. I like to keep a spoon handy because I like for things to be exact. Okay. 150. And we're going to weigh the exact same amount. 150 grams of powdered sugar okay. in our bowl as well. Okay, so we have our powdered sugar and almond flour in a bowl. Okay, we're just gonna set that aside for now. All right, I have another small bowl here, <laughs> okay. We're gonna turn our scale on and we're going to scale out our egg whites. So we need two portions of egg whites, okay? And we're gonna grab our bowl from our stand mixer. The first, the first portion of egg whites, we're going to measure out 58 grams, okay? and those egg whites will go in the bowl of the stand mixer. Okay, that's your first portion of egg whites in the bowl of the mixer. Okay, so we'll set those aside. And then your second portion of egg whites is 53 grams. So we have 53 grams of egg whites. We're gonna set those aside, okay? And we have the 58 grams in the stand mixer, all right? Okay, so we've scaled out our almond flour and powdered sugar, okay? Egg whites one and two. All right, we're now going to measure our granulated sugar all right, we're gonna zero that out. And in our small pot, we're going to put the same amount, 150 grams, the same amount as what we put in the bowl, 150 grams of each. So you have 150 grams of almond flour, 150 grams of powdered sugar in the bowl. So you'll also have 150 grams of granulated sugar in your small pot, okay? Okay, so we have 150 grams of the sugar in our small pot. We're going to add a little bit of water, okay? It's zeroed out, it's about 40 grams or so. We wanna get a wet sand consistency. This is similar to the Italian meringue, 50 grams, that's fine. This doesn't have to be accurate. It's fine if you add a little bit too much water, just take a little bit of time to boil out. Um, similar to the Italian meringue buttercream, um, that I make, if you've seen that tutorial, same concept. So we just want enough water to kind of make it like wet sand, all right? And then we're going to put that on the stove and we're gonna get started making our macarons. So we wanna take our almond flour and powdered sugar and we're gonna put it in our food processor and we're gonna pulse it for just a short period of time. Okay, we don't wanna do it for too long because the almond flour will release oils. So we just wanna get it pretty smooth so that we have nice smooth shells. So we're gonna pour that into the processor and pulse it for just a minute.
The almond flour and powdered sugar is blended nicely. Okay, and we have our egg whites, second egg whites. All right, we're now going to start our sugar. Okay, the sugar that we have in our small pot. Okay, we're going to take our digital thermometer. We're gonna turn it on and we're working in Celsius. Okay, and we want to get it to 118 Celsius. Okay, so we're gonna turn on our heat and cook our sugar. Okay, we're gonna take the temperature probe so that it can read the temperature and it will alert us when it's at 118, okay? simultaneously while your sugar is cooking. All right, this is the first batch of egg whites or the first portion of egg whites. We're gonna turn that on, okay? We want it to get frothy and whip up to a foamy egg white before adding our sugar. So the sugar will turn into a sugar syrup by the time it reaches 118 and we need the egg whites to be at a nice foamy, stage so we're going to turn that on and probably around about 112 113 you want to make sure that it's at a medium speed and then by 118 it'll be at a high speed when we add the sugar okay so our sugar is cooking our egg whites are whipping in the meantime, we are going to make a paste out of our almond flour and powdered sugar that we pulsed in the food processor and the second portion of egg whites. Okay, so we're gonna pour those egg whites into the almond flour and powdered sugar. Let's just do about half for now, okay? And we're going to mix it so that it forms a paste. So our sugar is at 118. Okay, we're going to turn it off. You can see that it's bubbling nicely. Okay, we'll take our probe out. And our egg whites are whipping at a high speed. Okay, this is the sugar. And I will show you the egg whites. And we're gonna pour this sugar into the egg whites while they're whipping at high speed. Okay, so the mixer is whipping at a high speed. I know it's quite loud, but I would like you guys to see the process. Probably a voiceover would be better but I'm going to slowly stream the sugar syrup into the bowl, down the side of the bowl, while it's whipping at high speed. You can see that the egg whites were nice and foamy when we added that sugar syrup in. Okay, so we're gonna let it stream down the side of the bowl. Warm, not completely cool, but warm on the side of the bowl. Okay, 
and we have a nice peak, stiff peak, okay? So you can see what that looks like when you lift the whisk out. Nice stiff peak, okay? So we're gonna take our meringue now and we're going to fold it into the paste that we have setting aside. So really quickly, so you can see, this is the paste that formed when we mixed our almond flour powdered sugar mixture with the second portion of egg whites, okay? So we're gonna now add our meringue to this mixture, all right? So we're gonna start with just a little bit maybe about one third of the meringue and we're going to fold it in okay we're gonna fold it in and you want to be careful as you fold so I know sometimes it's like what what does fold mean but we're going to kind of work our way around the bowl around the sides okay and down the middle okay so around and down and i'll just show you slowly so that you can get a good idea of the macronage and the best way to mix to get some nice macarons okay so we're just going around the bowl with our spatula and down the center, okay? Around and down. And you wanna rotate a little bit while you are doing so, so that you can make sure that all of the mixture is getting around down the center, okay? So you occasionally want to kind of deflate a little bit by taking your spatula and just kind of pushing it around like so. You want to make sure that you're getting all the paste from underneath, okay? Bringing it up and around so everything is getting mixed in very nicely. So we're going to continue that mixing method and we're going to add the rest of our meringue. Okay, we've added the first bit and mixed around. So now we're adding the remaining meringue and we're going to continue with the same macronage. Okay, this technique of mixing around So you want to continue your macronage um, until your batter becomes a nice flowy consistency. Not too thick, not too runny. So right now it's still kind of thick, you can see. Okay, it's not really falling off the spatula. So we need to mix a bit more. Okay, and we're mixing until it's a nice flowy 
ribbon consistency, you'll be able to make a figure eight out of your batter and you'll know that it is ready to be piped. Okay, so right now it's kind of thick, it's not really flowing at all off of the spatula. So we're gonna keep mixing. Our batter is getting to be a nice flowy consistency now. You can see that it's actually starting to flow a bit. Okay, still a bit thick. So we're just gonna work it around the bowl a little bit more. Okay. We don't wanna over mix because then the batter won't hold its shape, you'll get some wonky looking macarons. They won't be round. Once you pipe them, the batter will go all funky. So we don't want to over mix. So we want to be careful. We're looking for the right flow. Okay, so when your batter is ready, it'll be at a nice ribbon stage. It'll flow nicely off your spatula. And a nice ribbon. <laughs> okay, you'll also be able to make figure eight out of your batter. Okay, if you feel like it's too thick, continue to mix. If you feel like you're ready, then we can add to our piping bags and get ready to pipe. So our batter's ready. We're gonna add to the piping bags now. I have the piping bag prepared with the coupler, okay, and the tip, round tip, okay. I just have a paper cup here that I'm going to set the piping bag in just to hold it. bit and that's just going to hold our piping bag while we pour the batter in. Okay. And then we will be ready to pipe. So we're going to get started piping now. All right, we have our sheet trays here. We have our batter that's all bagged. And we have a towel here that um, we're going to use once we pipe the tray of macarons. We're going to want to remove the air bubbles, air bubbles by tapping it on the counter. So the towel helps so it's not so loud. All right, so we're going to get started with the first tray. So I'm holding the bag at a straight angle, okay, and then I'm going to begin to pipe, I'm going to squeeze the bag from the top, okay, squeeze, and then when I'm at my desired size, stop squeezing and twirl around, okay, squeeze from the top, space them out pretty nicely, stop squeezing and twirl it around. You just want to twirl it so it doesn't have any peak at the top and the batter can settle nicely. Okay. Squeeze from the top. Stop squeezing. Once they're piped, you want to just tap the tray 
the counter, you want to get out any air bubbles. Keep the tray as smooth as possible and leveled with the counter. Okay. And then just using a scribe or a toothpick, I'm just going to use a little toothpick today. You just want to smooth out any lumps or air bubbles that you see that kind of have gone to the top, okay, or surface that you can see any little lumps. You want to make sure the smell, the shells, the shells, not smells, the shells are nice and smooth. So we're just going to smooth them out, make sure they're good to go. Now rest for a bit and then we are ready to bake. So our macarons are piped and resting. Okay, we're ready to preheat our oven. My oven runs a little hot, okay? And it's important to learn your oven, know what kind of oven it is. All right, so I'm actually preheating and setting to 245, but it will actually be at 270, okay? So my oven thermometer will read 270, um, even though it's gonna be heated at 245, it's preheating now. Okay, our first tray is going in. Okay, we're gonna set our timer. All right, so we're gonna set our timer. Your thermometer also works as a timer. Okay, so we're gonna put 15 minutes on there. Okay. And then we're gonna check it, and then it's gonna bake for probably another nine or 10 minutes. Okay, so 15 minutes. All right guys, so the macarons have been baking now for about 27 minutes. Added a little extra time. Okay, so I'll just show you what they look like. All right, they look pretty good. All right, we're just gonna do a little wiggle test, okay, and make sure that the shell is nice and firm. If it moves, it'll need more time, okay? You don't want it to wiggle around or move. When we touch the top, it's nice and sturdy, okay? If it's too delicate, like you should be able to tap it, you don't want it to crack, okay? So those look good, feet look nice. We're gonna take them out and let them cool. That one, he got a little messed up, but that's okay. Okay guys, so all of our macarons are baked and cooled. All right, put them on my little cart to make sure they have ample time to cool. All right, you wanna make sure they're 100% cooled before you start peeling them off. I already checked one to make sure it comes off clean. Okay, so we have nice smooth tops, nice smooth bottom, all right? Nice tiny feet there. There's some that might have some, you know, the, maybe caught the parchment so it's not as smooth. Maybe there's some holes there, that's totally fine, okay? Sometimes these things aren't perfect, so we will take it, okay? So, you know, they sandwich up. You wanna pair them up to make sure they match nicely. And I'm sorry for the lighting. It got really dark and gloomy and rainy. So I hope you can see those feet there. Okay, so we're just gonna crack one open. Okay, we'll sacrifice one. And just see how it looks. On the inside, okay, nice crispy outside, nice crispy shell, okay, chewy in the center, and when you fill it, it will all marry together as one, the shells and the filling, you can use buttercream or ganache or anything you like but it should have a nice,
crispy outer shell, pretty thin outer shell, and then the flesh on the inside. Okay, it's fine if you have a few air bubbles, but for the most part, pretty nice shells. Okay? Okay guys, so I'm just gonna show you really quickly how to sandwich your macarons, okay? I actually made these into toasted coconut, all right? So I put a little bit of toasted coconut on the sides there after piping the buttercream. So I'll just show you really quickly, I know it's been a little bit of a long tutorial, but I have my buttercream in a bag with quite a large circle tip, large round tip, okay? And this is just for a plain filling, buttercream filling if you're doing anything else. Um, you can use a smaller tip if you want to add a fruit filling or curd or anything. But today we're just going to be using this round tip. Okay, so you're just going to squeeze the bag and stop. All right, squeeze and stop. And you can put your desired amount of buttercream. All right. And then we will take our tops, okay? And we're just going to press down so you have a nice sandwiched cookie, okay? Like so. 